All right. So yeah, then I would say let's get started. Um, topics for today, we're still closing out chapter 11. Um, I did have a uh, two quick points to follow up on from last time um, for those two particles. And uh, then I would say let's go over the negation, especially the one with Ben. And then finally, I think we'll get to the question markers today as well. And uh, yeah, I think that would, then we're almost done with chapter 11. There are like a few more points towards the end about, about mm, converters. Now, that's a pretty hefty topic. I think that we'll make one more session and then we're done with morphology. So, and there is inside and we can go into verbs and, and sentence structures. Any questions before we get started? Okay, if not, then let me go straight into it. So last time I had spoken about, or we had spoken, I should say, about the, the particle ya. Yeah, um, and I gave two usages for that, but I did, because those were the two main use cases that uh, Neville gives in the book. But actually, there is a basic meaning that I think we should cover. Essentially, the base meaning to my understanding of this particle is indeed, or surely. And last time I said... Hello there. <laughs> so last time I said this one did not survive into into Coptic. Uh, that is wrong. I've since learned from Chernikol. Uh, it actually survives as ye, um, spelled like this. Um, and yeah, so basic meaning. I had given a few examples here on the page. Um, or I had put a few, put a few in. So ya um, yati anaku or anaku empaihau. Um, I am alive today, or yes, I'm indeed alive today. Um, tomorrow is upon or is in the hands of God. Um, that's a um, a closing, a letter closing I've seen more than once. Like basically like a way how to close out a, a personal letter. Um, I don't know, very lively sentence. Yes, I'm alive today, but tomorrow is in the hands of God. Which God is not specified? Of God, period. So that, that English translation... Which sounds a bit monotheistic um, is uh, is I think appropriate, and so here the particle just basically means indeed or yeah I'm indeed alive today yes I'm alive today something of that nature. Then the the other example sentence here um, was basically ya ben irin I guess this would be sesh and hekaren yuna. So let me take this one apart. Um, this year is a second tense. So in that we did, that we did what? That we did pass, uh, Sesh. Um, basically pass, in this case, beyond the control points. This is the, um, the workers area has like control gates that they normally stay within. Um, and in this case, they went past the control points because they're essentially on strike. Um, so also wh wherever I took this from, translated that as we went on strike. So that we went on strike, um, it was not, ben. it was not in Hekar, Yuna. it was not because or from that we were hungry. And then there's like a certainly in front. So surely it is not because we were hungry that we, we went on strike. I don't know what the overall context is. Uh, so what the contrast is that's being indicated? Is it because we want our rights? Because we want to get paid? Not sure. Um, in any case, so two examples for how to use ya. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. Uh, this one, I think, is probably from uh, the blinding of truth, if I'm not, in, not mistaken. So the young protagonist here basically gets bullied by uh, by his peers ya amun emtik it or yat verily or indeed there is not with you a father in other words you don't have a father because uh, to have sorry yeah to have or to not have sorry to exist or to not exist together with uh, with md is the way how you form the verb uh, to have in egyptian so basically this one would mean indeed you don't have a father so long story short in all these cases you could just translate it as indeed and then turn it into something more idiomatic. And from there, then flow those other usages that we've um, talked about the last time, namely, ya ich, what is it with blah, 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 some kind of infinitive, what is it with this and this that you're doing or not doing? And finally, ya ir, um, indeed as for or 
translated by Nevoe simply as because. All right. Wanted to add that. Any questions about this one? Right. Not pretty straightforward, right? Then let me go to the next point. Which was, so this caused some confusion, I remember last time, uh, that was the old possessive pronoun to and su, um, which basically, yeah, you use that. I want to briefly go over how you use that and why it, why it even exists in late Egyptian. This is some pretty old stuff. Why do they carry that along? Well, let's go back to how you normally you indicate possession. Um, if you want to say, for example, my brother or her brother or whatever, you take the possessive article. So pi plus the suffix pronoun. So for example, her brother would be uh, pi son. Um, the older way of doing this is you just stick the suffix pronoun directly onto the, the possessed item. So for example, araf would be his mouth. Um, now, uh, as we've discussed before, you still do this uh, the old fashioned way for body parts and for some other for some other nouns and also if you would like want to uh, some fixed nouns like some titles and the like and uh, you also do it in poetry more than you would do in normal prose so this is basically the higher higher um, prestige kind of expression this is the everyday kind of expression and uh, so that's the normal way how you do it now where that runs into trouble is if you want to say for example a brother of his so his brother would be pipe son um, a brother would be wa son, but how do you say a brother of his? I mean, you can't say you can't say wa pai son. That doesn't work because one is unde indeterminate and one is determined. So you can't just glue the two together. So how do you get out of that? That's where those possessive absolute pronouns come in. So, for example, if you have if you wanted to say one brother of his, it would be wa son, one brother, sut, so. That's how, how you can basically get out of that conundrum that uh, you want to use like an indefinite article with a um, with a possessive. Um, so same thing here. Um, if you wanted to combine it with this similar problem, so Pai San would be this brother, Pai San Tut, this brother of yours. Um, what do you do if it is of me? Then you use the, um, it looks like the, um, the independent pronoun. So basically, anak. So wa romich anak, a man of mine. Um, that's the that's the pronoun that fills in, and they're also plural forms. Uh, the plural first plural looks basically like uh, again the independent pronoun anan, and then you have this construction here with an n, and ten imi, n sen imi, um, which basically fills in for the other two persons that we didn't cover yet, the second and third plural. So that, in a nutshell, is this alternative expression that you use in some cases. Um, you can also use that, and that's where it gets interesting, you can use it also for um, is his, is yours, is mine, etc., predicative use. So, for example, I think that's what we had the last time, or something very similar. Ir, pata, and kemi. Um, pata, and khati. Uh, tiu, set. Tiu, um, just another spelling of of two. They are. I think they the actually. You know what? The 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 J is normally not pronounced. So I think it will be two. So two said. Um, they are yours. So the subject comes um, after, and then the the um, yours, mine, etc. comes in front. Uh, from Dynasty twenty onwards, you use the independent pronoun instead. So if you wanted to say, for example, it is yours, it in this case being Su. In toksu, or it is his in tossu, uh, in tossu, it is hers in tossu, etc. So basically, you use this now in the first place. And a very similar example uh, in tof payam, the sea is his, so, or rather, his is the sea, the sea is his, he owns it. Okay, uh, we will need that later today. That's why I thought. I'll, I'll stress that a little bit. But I think now we've really rounded off all the different ways of how to, to indicate possession. Any questions about those? Okay, all right. So yeah, I had a, a quick question. Yes. So I wanted, if I wanted to say the C is mine, 
would it be um ba, ba yom inuk or would it be oh no no we need a predicative um use right so um let's see untuk no no that's his yeah so how would i guess what would i use for the, the sea is mine you had it almost right just that the predicate goes in front so it would be um anak payam so okay. mine is the sea it wouldn't mine be the, yeah. I don't think it would be payam anak. I don't think that could be that could be the sea of mine. But in that case, you would just basically rather make it pai uh, payam. So um, my sea. You would just use the normal, the normal um, possessive uh, possessive article. So yeah, it would be anak payam. Okay. Good point. So what you'll often see is like something. Mm -hmm. Something, the important part is the something that's possessed comes after. This is kind of like an adjectival sentence, a sentence, sort of. Um, and uh, so that's the, the important thing to remember about the construction. There will be an example a little bit further on in this session. Okay, look. So yeah, I think with that, we have covered all this, how to say um, look or see. Then uh, we went over all the different negations. And today I'd like to focus on the first two, just because they're so super common. You'll see those the most. So I would say let's just go straight into them. Um, the first important one is burn. So that's being used for the first present, for the third future, prospective set you have, for nominal sentences, adjective sentences, some adverbial. So... Um, in all these these cases, you use either bun or with the extension of yuna uh, at the end, which becomes the the um, sandwich in Coptic un an with something in between un something something an to negate it. So basically, in both cases, you use bun for the introduction. And how exactly that happens is kind of interesting. Um, so, for example, if you have paremich her sejum or simply paremich sejum, then you just slap the bun in front of it. So this first present sentence basically would become bun paremich sejem. So far so good. Um, this also works with um, with the the subject pronoun. So t sejem would become ben t sejem. So far so good. Note that it goes at the very beginning. It doesn't go in between. Um, where it becomes tricky. Hang on. Uh, that would be yeah. So um, if you slap a the, the U converter in front of it, uh, like um, circumstantial, um, the bun comes after. So U param sejum, uh, U bun param sejum. So the U goes in front. What gets tricky is basically when you have a suffix pronoun. So if you have U e sejum, I, as I am hearing, or as I was hearing, or and then I was hearing or I heard, um, if you want to put a bun in between there, you have to use the subject pronoun now. So it's not bun yui sajam, but it becomes yu bun ti sajam. So you basically have to break this up um, and you basically put the converter in front of the of, in front of the negated adverbial sentence. I think if you read it, you're not going to notice even that that exists. Um, but if you want to make new late Egyptian sentences, so that's the one rule to remember that this behaves a little bit differently. You can't put the burn directly in front of like you plus suffix pronoun that has to be broken up. Um, there's an alternative construction as well, you item sejum. Um, I'm just going to skip that for the moment. Just want to point out that that exists as well as a negation. And finally, the future three um, so the difference between those two is here, like this is an independent sentence. This here has to come after some other sentence because the U um, continues whatever sentence there was before. The future three is different. The U, the future three, you have a sejum, I shall be here, um, he shall be hearing, or he will be upon hearing. You just put the burn in front of it. So there it doesn't have to become, um, let's see if I can get that right. It doesn't have to become you bun su er sejum, like you would think from this, but because it's a future three that can stand independently, um, it just gets the ben in front. So ben you of er sejum. So this is really the only big outlier here that I'm aware of. Okay, doke. Um, hope that was not for the uh, video. Can we just uh, translate these? Which one? I don't know. I said for the recording. Can we just translate these? 
The sentences you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, do you mean like all of them? Uh, I mean, just a couple. Yeah, we don't have to do. Okay, sure. Do all of them. Absolutely. Want to take a quick, quick shot at like the first two or something? Yeah, sure. Okay, go for it. So without the negation, we have um, the man hears. Mm -hmm. or the man hears. Yeah, the man hears. And then um, the man, the man does not hear, or the man is not hear listening. Oh no, no, the man does not hear. Simple as that. The man does not hear. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And then the next one. Um, I. I, I hear. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I, I am not. I I don't hear. Or yeah, that's right. I don't hear. Yeah, I, I hear not, as Shakespeare would say. But uh, <laughs> for us today, it's I don't hear, because we like to be complicated. That's really it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody else want to continue for the next two? I can do that. Okay. So. Um, um, a dependent sentence, so I'm kind of wondering if I should add a conjunction of some sort. Yeah, in all likelihood, yes. All right, so let's go with because the man hears and which becomes because the man doesn't hear. Right. Could be as, could be and. Could be could, as. Could Maybe it's a it's a because. So yeah, mm, a basic could be when, kind of circumstance. Well, circumstance. Okay. When I hear... <laughs> and yeah. when I don't hear. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. Uh, just for a question, because the other one said per, uh, prospective Sejemf. So can you have Sejemf and Ben Sejemf? In a moment. The... Oh, Absolutely. okay. Sorry. Probably on the next page. No, no, you're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only one where you don't really have it is the um, that habitual thing. Um, negative aorist, you never do something, right. something. that uses boo. Um, but and then of course you have a special form for the perfect. But for the majority of forms uh, that you'll encounter, uh, you just put the bun in front. Uh huh. All right. Somebody want to do the last one? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Oh, does someone else say anything? Oh, I don't want to. No, no. Okay, you come on. Good. <laughs> Okay. Uh, he he will hear, mm -hmm. and uh, he will not hear. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it goes the bun. In this case, goes right in front of the the whole sentence. And that's how you do basic negation for a lot of lot of patterns. So now, I had some example sentences. Now these are. In a lot of cases, like for nominal sentences, for possession, what we just talked about, for adjectival sentences, um, I see that they slap that yuna on. I have to admit, I'm not completely clear on the on the rules when you do it, when you don't have to do it. Um, there are many circumstances, like, for example, all these quasi-verbal forms or the perspective, where it's just been by itself. And I think in these cases, I see them more often with the yuna. I don't know if that's a if that's a hard and fast rule that you always have to do it, or if it's just a preference. Um, honestly, not experienced enough for that yet. There is a chapter later on negations, much much later in Nivu. So I think once we get there, uh, then maybe let's let's open that up again. But basically, don't be surprised if you see that yuna. It's like ne pas or ne plus in in French, or um, I guess an is in earlier Egyptian. It basically forms like a set of parentheses on whatever around at whatever is being negated. And so yeah, with that being said, um anybody want to take one at at a time? Erin, I mean, you were very soft, but I heard a yes. Oh yes, I'll I'll <laughs> take a crack. Got it. <laughs> can you hear me? Am I loud enough? No, I can, yes. Okay. Um her inak pi ten nefer. Bin inak pi ten bin yuna. So, um, but, uh, but I am your good thing. Basically, I am your good thing. Mm -hmm. I am not your bad thing. That's right. And the official translation I saw for this one was basically like your friend or your. Like I'm, I'm good for you. Basically, I'm not your enemy. Um, 
that's what it really means. But yeah, it's a, it's a very peculiar use of Nefer and Bin or Born. So yeah, you had it absolutely right. Um, on the part of the grammar, well, I said it already what it is. It's a nominal sentence, right? So uh, Anak something something. Anak A, I am A, no copula required. Um, could be, but I am your good thing, or I'm your your friend. It could be, and I am your friend. Depends on context. Yeah, perfect. Well done. So you see how it's done, basically. Just the bun in front of the, the nominal sentence and closing it out at the end. Any questions on this one? Pretty straightforward, right? So I would say then let's just move on to the next one. Well done, Aaron. Thank you. Whom haven't I heard from yet today? Okay, I'll go. Okay. So we have um, Ben Inuksu Iuna. Mm -hmm. Let's see, ben Inuksu. I am. I am not. I am not he, or I am not. I am not him. Mm. Oh, Close, but the thing is, if you wanted to say I'm not him, actually, I wonder how you say that. Would that be anak anak pai? That's how you would do it in Coptic. Uh, anak pe. Uh, I think it would be something like this. It's su though. Think back to what we talked about a moment ago with the the possessive pronouns. Oh, um, jeez. So this would be um. Not mine. You got uh, it. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. That's it. So basically, the guy's saying, but it's not mine, or it's not mine. Bun anaksu ian, or an, or iuna. Okay. <laughs> in Coptic, it becomes an, so I have that in my head. So, bun anaksu iuna. Uh, it's not mine. Simple as that. So, well, there would be context when you can't tell whether you're saying some, uh, something is mine or I am something. Like in the sentence I just did, if it just said anak pa nefer, you wouldn't necessarily know if it's saying I am a good thing or it's my good thing or my, oh, you know what I mean? Is that, does it become a question of context in some cases? I'm not sure because if you wanted to say it's not my thing, you would say, I think, let me see. It's not my thing. No, in that case you'd really, so if, you, if it were, if you just want to say it's not mine, you use the construction that we have here, right? The the ben anaksu. That's what it but, is. But I mean, take take away the negation for a minute. Just talking about the possessive thing, like the example sentence from before was the C is the C is his. But mm -hmm. theoretically, if it weren't the C, could couldn't it be like he is the C? And um, it's whether it's the he is the C or the C is his comes down to context. Okay, let's see. So basically, you're saying in tof payam, right? In tof payam, he is the sea. I think that would be, you're right. I think that would be possible because I don't think you necessarily need a copula there. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think you do. There is such a thing as a ha. Huh. I mean, in Coptic, you would need to put a pay then, but I don't think you really have to do this. I'd have to double check, honestly. But I think you're right. It may be. There may be some scenario where indeed the, the two could be equivalent. It really depends on if you need some kind of copula um, or not. And I don't think those rules are as strict yet as they they used to be in early Egyptian and as they're going to be again in Coptic. I think Ramesside late Egyptian is kind of fluid. But I'll check, up, I'll check into that. I'll make a follow-up item. It's a good one. Interesting point. All right. Can I get somebody on the third one? I'll go again. Okay. All right. If it's okay with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we have some silent okay. partners today, but okay. <laughs> That's fine. So we have um UF, UF, E N E N E Ba E Key. Mm-hmm. He brought he brought to me or he came brought to me this another it's definitely so, it's not not come it's not e but it's ini uh, ini yes so he he brought to me 
another. Mm -hmm. And keep keep in mind what the the context is. So it says, "I sent the first donkey back," um, and then, like I said, and he brought to me. Oh another. yeah, mm -hmm. brought to me another. I missed that entirely. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> then it makes more sense suddenly. Uh, it good does. Job, by the way, yeah. on on recognizing the nominalized another that could be like a a pitfall, but you like sailed right through it. Okay, and then Khurban Nefa Yuna. Um, so it's negating the nefer. So and. Not a good one, mm. right? And it, and it wasn't good. Basically, it was not a good one. Um, I wonder if that's actually really adjectival because there's no predicate here, uh, no no subject here. But essentially, yeah, you're just negating the effort, and it wasn't a good one. So it's a complaint, obviously. Oh, but it wasn't a good one. I'm not happy. I want my money back. I want a new donkey. This one's not. Oh, so so so, but is better here for uh, her. Her, I think, would be a but in this case. It was probably the best, but it's not a good one. Okay. All right. Well done. I just take the next one. So next one. Um. So Ben Wenef, Irmai Yuna, uh, Irmai is with me. That is that thing that becomes Nim later in Coptic. So that's like, like just like one complicated way of writing this new preposition that more and more replaces Hena with. So instead of Hnai with me, it's Irmai with me. One of Irmai, he was with me. Ben, one of Irmai, Yuna, he was not with me. Simple as that. The one in this case is used basically as a past tense uh, converter uh, to take a um, an adverbial sentence and make it into the past tense. Because if you look at the adverbial sentence by itself, it's tense free, right? So you need some kind of tense marker, and that's what the one does here. Yeah. That's still a thing in late Egyptian that the type of negation and the way un or when is spelled um, gives you a clue about what tense we're talking about. You mean whether it has like an, an extra N or not? Or Yeah. Ish. Because there is, I don't remember what exactly it was, but there is such a thing in Middle Egyptian. I honestly don't know. It's the answer. It's the answer. I don't know. I know what you mean. Um, I remember that that painful thing where, where somehow depending on what how many ends you have, uh, the tense changes, and I can never remember which one's which. Um, I'm it's not same. sure if that's still a thing. Um, okay. Another nice follow up item. Yay! I mean, that's <laughs> nice thing. we're learning this stuff together. Um, I'm also going through this grammar the first time. I'm just trying to stay one lesson ahead. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I'll take that down somewhere in the channel once we find out. Or if somebody else sees it, like oh. in Shuri Kual, for example. Um, the only problem I have with a lot of these grammars, actually, I think all of them, I'm not sure about the good old, um, isn't it Ehrmann? The, the really old one, uh, the 100 years old German handwriting one. Um, oh, yeah, that's Ehrmann. Mm -hmm. right. But uh, all the other ones, they're basically assuming, well, if you know it for Middle Egyptian, we don't need to talk about it, which is... Super annoying. I'm trying to change that around to basically say, no, no, we need to talk about it. If it's a thing in late Egyptian, let's talk about it. But these kind of things very often get glossed over because the assumption is, well, you know that anyway, so why waste time on it? Um, mm. That book is still to be written. Maybe Christian does it one day. Well, there is Ermann. <laughs> hmm? Well, there is Ermann. Honestly, I've only read a little bit into it just because handwriting is always so slow. Yeah, and it's not the. I mean, let's let's be glad considering the time he wrote that's Latin handwriting, and not current. No, yeah, but absolutely. it's not a it's not a fun read. I'm with you there. I mean, I like Latin, but but uh, just had that last night. Somebody was making a comment on glyph study about Kircher. That that Wikipedia said Kircher had said this and that and that, and I thought, well, did he really say that? So I did look up the PDFs and so of okay, case it's Latin. And then it's of course a Latin, not a facsimile, it's basically digitized from 1600 or whatever. So you have to deal with, um, well, with the print and with the print from the next page shining through. And it's just like after a few pages that, you know what, I don't care. It's not important enough. I don't need to know this. It's just too painful. Can I please have like a typeset PDF? Anybody? Please. All right. But so yeah, that's yes. our, our parenthesis here of of Ben and Yuna um, for these types of sentences. Let's go to more verbal things. Well, not just entirely verbal things. There's more than, uh, adverbial as well. So circumstantial. 
Um, somebody want to try the first one here? I'll give it a try. Okay. So, you ben su her uh, dit mm -hmm. per per eth rebu en, okay. Yeah. <laughs> er na Erwa. Bu and nerd, does that ring any bell? It's a very late. It's not the bu is in. It's not the negation, uh, even though it looks like it. Then it does not ring a bell. Okay. Coptic would be a ball outside. Still don't know Coptic. <laughs> okay. Outside, okay. So go to like. So uh, er bu and. Mm -hmm. So you can translate the, uh, you can transcribe it as bull or the bird, erbul, erbul. Some people write erbuner, um, but really the nr is just a syllable final l. They're now indicating that, and they're using this this digraph. So whenever you have like n plural strokes and then the uh, r plus plus uh, determinative stroke, that's normally just a phonetic transcription for l. So I see erbul. Mm -hmm. And wow, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. So, a uh, dependent sentence in Suhair needs. So, let's say when for the time being, when he made him go outside on the road oh good point um should have said that the the bell a, a bell um actually ends with the road thingy that's still part of the the spelling so it goes from here to ah, here. okay mm -hmm. so ignore the road there's no road right um so what's the what is that a bad bird after the war it is it belongs to the war though or where? What is that? What does that meaning? Then I only know wa as a uh, rota one. That's right. And uh, if it is, I think that's a stative. Um, with a bad bird, it can just basically mean alone. But often means alone. Ah. So something along the lines: when he made him go outside alone, mm -hmm. as whatever you want. That's right. Uh, but you have a burn in there. Oh, of course, as he did not. <laughs> do all of that <laughs> you got it so i think in, in the context of the story basically that this this prince is being kept at home because uh to save him from doom and he let not ah, he did prince, not let okay. him go out uh alone by himself or something i think that's where it's from i could be mistaken so, ah, so it's more in the negation it's more he didn't let him do this rather than he didn't make him do this right that's right mm -hmm. that's right so he did not give that he went. Technically, he did not give that he went, and that that he went is a subjunctive, subjunctive, I think so. Or yeah, subjunctive. Perspective, perspective. I mean, whatever you want to call it, um, that always goes together with with the the d. Uh, so much so that d plus subjunctive in Coptic becomes uh, the the new causative class. The moment that Christian told that told me that for the first time I was like mind blown all those verbs that you have in Coptic that basically start with a T like I don't know uh, to jaw or uh, tamo or whatnot they're literally like D and then plus some kind of verb in the subjunctive which is like so cool it's the only such MF that lives on and that's not entirely true um, so the causative S disappears the causative S pretty much is gone it's not productive anymore anyways um, I'm not sure if they're like relic forms some causatives that are still around could be um but in general if you want to form new causatives they're formed with t and there's at least i think at least 40 of them i've seen in a list maybe more mm -hmm. so quite common but they're lexical it's not like you can do that with every verb it's not like uh like part of the verbal paradigm like in some i think in some semitic languages you can do that as a rule it's not that common so yeah basically what you do is you put the burn in there um, 
it comes after the circumstantial marker. Um, yeah, and that's it. The rest of the sentence stays unchanged. We don't need to make any structural changes. Let me take the next one, future three. Um, this is from a will, actually. So this is from the, the will of a, I think it's a widow, if I'm not mistaken. So basically, let me pull that apart. Here, as for, as for pa, the pa enti, or paet, the one, the one bu puf did nai, who has not given me. So as for the one who has not given me, uh, add in English anything. Burn eye er naf, not will I give him em acheti of my things. Or maybe it's achuti. Um, not sure if that still has a productive plural here. So the interesting thing is the, the achet does not have a an, an article. Uh, so it's not uh, na achet or na in achet or something. She uses still a very classical vo word form here like acheti, my things, of my things or from my things. So I will not give him of my things. The, basically, the context is that she's complaining in the world, actually, that some of her kids have been very good to her and some have not done anything for her. As a result, the ones that have not given me anything, I'm not going to give them anything now in my world. And then comes the whole list of the good children, how much they're each going to get. And the rest is basically like zilch, nada, forget about it. So that's the, the background here. Two negations in there. So the negative perfect gets the bupuf, um, later emperf in Coptic. And the the future three, um, A at D, I will give, just gets the button in front. Questions about this one? I yeah. see some wrinkled brows on this one. <laughs> so is the F tacked onto Bupu a suffix pronoun? Uh, yes, it is. The way that the negative um, the negative perfect marker works is it just takes the, uh, the suffix pronouns. So it's basically, it's, it's conjugated. Um, so bupui, bupuk, uh, bupuf, et cetera. Or however that thing was really pronounced. In uh, in Coptic, then you have something like, I uh, probably will mix Bohairic and Zahidic now, but something like MP, MPEC, uh, MPEF, MPES, and so on. Um, uh, it's also still conjugated. Conjugated. Great point. I didn't point that out because from Coptic it's so familiar. But yeah, it's actually a pretty pretty interesting thing that you conjugate the the negative marker. What was it again? Um, Et, I think you looked it up, right? That what the the history behind that thing was. Was it like some kind yeah. of verb to do um, or to something of that nature? It, it's like a, they uh, called it like um, past auxiliary verb. Hmm. Um, I couldn't find anything on anybody making a clear statement, or I didn't look long enough to find a clear statement on um, how it's to be translated. So, if I, so it was Puy in Lesco listed as auxiliary verb past and pa or pao for Middle Egyptian to have done in the past auxiliary. So it and the bu is of course the other. Negate. It's of course a negation, so negative, not probably from, not yet. Um, so it's really, and then since it starts out as a verb, it would make complete not a sense that you would put a suffix pronoun there. So it's basically a negative sedum f. Right, and that's a great explanation. You're right. So it's really like didn't in English, basically. Pretty much, it pretty I, I much is a is a sort of negated past auxiliary verb coming from somewhere. I mean, I don't know why English needs to do all the time. You can't just neg... Well. Plus, yeah. that's recent. Okay, no, I've got something to try to look up after this. do it consistently. You, you can do... Um, you can still use the old form. Uh, I hear you not, basically, instead of I don't hear you. That's That's completely possible. Yeah, it's possible, but you're going to sound like you're trying to imitate... Yeah, yeah, no, a certain, no, just like three hundred. A certain years. butcher from Stratford of Avon. Um, so I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't. Just because it's technically still correct, I don't think. I wouldn't you'd do it call that. I mean, unless you sound like a Quaker at a, the coffee shop or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I typically don't. Will thou give me a grand latte? 
or whatever, Wendy or whatever, whatever the, however they pronounce that, Wendy. I love to long in Scotland. I won't say thou. I'll say use to differentiate. Ooh, nice. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Yes, how many how many other pronouns there are in in English? The unofficial. I, I, I love. I, I must say, I love that. We've lost the singular one, so now we make up a new plural one by putting our plural s at after the after a pronoun. I think it's just too funny. In Pittsburgh, is yins. Yins is the plural. Yins. I think Karen, you know, right. <laughs> I do know that's yeah that's where I'm from. Uh, that's uh, one of my favorite things is all of the regional answers to that problem of the lack of a second person plural. You get use yins y'all. I mean, all, all over yins, the world yins. you get it. You're all in every English scenario you get you get a solution to that problem. Very cool. All right. Um, the next ones, the next two are quite simple. Anybody want to take both of them? Three and four. Yeah, go. Okay. Bin Jadin Wad Aja. May we not speak falsely or something? Maybe not speak speak wickedly? Yeah, or just falsely, like basically, falsely. Uh, we shall not lie or, um, yeah, yeah, we shall not lie, I think. Let us not lie, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well done. And again, so it's like a, a Sejumer form in this case, Jaden, uh, Jadan, um, and you just put the burn right in front of it. And I think that was the question, uh, ET's question a moment ago. Can you do that? That's exactly what you do. Okay. All right. The next one to understand that one, that's idiomatic. So you really need to see what it is on the right. Uh, otherwise, it's like completely unclear. Want me to go for the next one? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so we have a uh, Bensu. Mm -hmm. So Bensu D. That's right. Bensu D. Bensu D. Mm -hmm. So D is an adverb, right? So this is um, not not him here. Mm -hmm. In or he is not English. English. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got mm -hmm. it. He's not here. Now, the one on the left, now you mentioned. I will have to see the one. Okay, I understand what you're saying, right? So in order to know the other than that, I would just say not, not he, mm -hmm. or not him. Right, but it doesn't mean like it doesn't mean it. It isn't him, but it's basically short for Ben Sudi uh, or Ben Sudai. He's not here. Um, sort of like in Spanish, no está, like <laughs> not present. Um, Fuck yeah. So it's kind of, I've seen it in a few texts, uh, it exists. Um, that's why I thought I'd put it on here because it's not immediately intuitive that it would mean that, um, but mm -hmm. it seems to be an idiomatic expression for, for um, he's not here. All right, well done. I'll do the last one. So mbiit is a word for no, but it's kind of an emphatic word for no. Um, you can also say man or iman. Uh, it's not, I think in Coptic, that's, that's becoming common. So um, um, biat is like, absolutely not, or but no, or something of that nature. Um, so in this case, um, biat ben anak itchai itchai su. Uh, this here is a relative form. Is it a relative form? A relative or a participle? Oh, I always get that wrong. One of those two. Um, basically, how can you tell? Because it normally would have that prothetic yacht in front of it, like the extra reed leaf and a and an A2 man. But since that's pronounced like a simple vowel by now, so they just sometimes write the preposition A instead. Um, they spell it phonetically. So this should really be reed leaf plus plus A2 man. And then you have Ichai to steal. Ichai su to steal it. E Ichai su, the one who has stolen it. Ben anak e chai su. I'm not the one who has stolen it. Simple as that. So absolutely no, it's not me who has stolen it. That's it in a nutshell. Um, so that's again... I had a, a question about this one. Mm -hmm. Without the bin, could you have taken this to be a just like a participle statement? Like it is not I who stole it or... Like, like Middle Egyptian has these, these participle statements... Um, what do you mean? Like, like, what else should I have said or could I have said? 
No, I'm saying one way to translate it because they have a section where they talk about participle statements where you have you have these um, independent pronouns. Where, where like, like for example, first would be like it is not, it is I, um, or you could say it is he. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the where they have the dependent pronoun plus participle? That's not, I read it in Hutch. I, I see what you said. I think you want the 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 independent pronoun there just because the who has stolen it is a noun. It's not really the the um there's new suffix pronouns. Uh, so, sorry, the new subject pronouns like t, took, etc. They are really for adverbial sentences, and it's not an adverbial sentence. So I think it has to have the the independent pronoun. Right, you know, I agree with that. But 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 instead of saying it is I, uh, you can also say I am the one who, right? Mm -hmm. Or I am the one who um, stole it or took it as well, right? Instead of saying it is I who stole it. Right, isn't that the same thing though? Like Anak? Yeah, no, no, I agree. No, it's the exact same thing. I'm just saying it's a different way of you know of oh, translating uh, it. You mean? I think yeah. I got. You. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, either would be fine. You're absolutely right. So I misunderstood. It is I who stole it, or yeah, I'm the I one am the one who. All the same thing. It's just a variation in English, but it would be the same in Egyptian, I think. Now I got your point. I think. Um, I think we really need to get to nominal sentences at some point. Um, in uh, London, they do that at the very beginning, like I think chapter five and six. Um, but then uh, I think Niverse saves it for like chapter 30 or something, because you don't want to know what a nominal sentence is. <laughs> no, I always make fun of, uh, of the, the things being so far at the end. Maybe we should pull that forward just to talk a little bit about how nominal sentences work in late Egyptian. I think that would probably be one that just like we pulled the present one, the first present forward, um, just because without it, you can't do anything. We should probably have like a session on, on nominal sentences soon. That would make sense. Not too different, honestly, from earlier stages. But what you do with the copula would be would be interesting. Cool. Let me close out the uh, negation. I think we have nine more minutes. Let me quickly talk about the interrogative particles. Um, basically, there are two major ones. And one is the one for two questions. When you just really want to have an answer, yes or no, you're not presupposing anything. And that one is in, or later in Coptic, it becomes ene. So it probably was something like ene already. Normally spelled with the um, the waterline n, but you could use any of those as well. I think the last one is quite rare. Um, but non notwithstanding, the one that you actually see quite a bit is it's spelled like the earlier negation, which is kind of confusing. But it's just the the question particle at the beginning of the sentence. So this is really used for true questions like, do you know him? Don't you know him? I basically just want an answer and I'm not presupposing anything. And of course, press question markets like that, we don't have them in, in English. Um, we use, uh, oh, arguably we do because we use do for that. Right? Do you know him? Do you see it, etc. cetera? Um, lots of other uh, languages have special markers for that. In China, in Chinese, it would be ma. I mean, a Mandarin, in Japanese, ka, tsi in Yiddish. This one comes at the beginning of the sentence, not at the end. These two guys come at the end. Latin n comes after the first wor a word of the sentence, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Malay has something like this too. So it's very common. Um, there are lots of languages that do that. So Egyptian is not unusual. Uh, it belongs to the languages where this comes at the beginning of the sentence. So just like in Yiddish, um, not at the end of the sentence. There's also a way how to form rhetorical questions where you've already made up your mind and you're just basically asking for agreement. So like, for example, if I were to say, well, is that my fault? Of course, you know that the answer I'm expecting is no, it isn't. Uh, or you think I don't know that. That would be the negative version of it. Um, again, I think I already have the answer. Of course I do. So in those cases, you can use is or ist. Um, they also live on in Coptic. Um, Originally, something like, I think, C, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and again, you have those in, in other languages as well. Like, for example, in my native German, we use den a lot. Is this then mein Fehler? Like, of course, no, it isn't. And you have similar things in, in, in Latin or Chinese or whatnot. So let's take a quick look at how they are being used. Um, let's see. So, yeah. Um, for example, first one here. Perspective set MF, uh, UE or UI or something, however that was vocalized. Um, may I go, or 
do I have to go or something of that nature? Um, and then N Benu or N Bell, that's the one that we had a moment ago, the Ebol. Uh, so um, may I go out or must I go out? Should I go out? Well, how do you make that into a question? One way to do that is by putting the in in front of it. So in UI Ebol or in Ebol, um, do I have to go out? Basically, I think you probably like in all languages could probably achieve the same thing just by changing the sentence melody. But thankfully, often they do have a question marker at the front that makes it very clear that is a, a question. Anybody want to try the next one? Yeah, go. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Right. Just a second. Could you oh. repeat how you... Um how that sentence was read. Okay, sure. Let me write it down. Um, so basically in UE, that's the perspective, something like this. And so this would be UE would be the perspective. Okay. I should or I may or something go out. I mean, with the, the ball, I'm not sure why it has an N. I think that is less common, but it occurs. Um, and then the in is simply, um, the question marker. All right, thanks. Anytime. Let's do the next one. Chris, I think you were on it. Okay. So we have in Eniac Sue. Mm -hmm. And let's see this question here. So can you bring it or can you bring him? It or could be. May? It could be. Look at the next part though, and then you'll know which tense it is. So bupu ni in ini bupu ak ini do f def. Okay, you are not. Have you not brought it? Uh, right. So that gives you a hint to what the tense in the first one would be, because it could be a subjunctive or it could be a past tense. So uh, the sentiment or past tense. That's yeah. Right. So so it would be like so. Did you bring it? Mm -hmm. And. Did you bring it? And then I say, uh, you did not. You did not bring it. Right. And it's basically an either or question. Did you bring it or didn't you bring it? So basically, they just put the question particle twice. I think that's also common in some other languages where you just basically put the two options next to the other. You brought it, you didn't bring it. Did you bring it or did you not? So that's really what it is. Well done. Why the need to work? Um, yeah, so what is this? Good point. So this is really, um, that's the infinitive of of any, right? It's a so-called feminine infinitive. It gets the T ending. Oh, okay. That's not a sedgen to a, f oh, all right, all right, all right. All clear. Okay, no, but I'm glad you asked. So this is the, the conjugated uh, negative particle. Um, and then here's the infinitive and the infinitive gets a, a suffix pronoun. And because in that case, the T is preserved, they actually put a W. So that's why I put into, uh, because the, the W, of course, is not, not pronounced. It's just there to remind you that, yes, please pronounce the T. It wouldn't be any su. really is like French, for fuck's hmm? sake. It's like French. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you write a lot of letters that you don't pronounce to make letter, the letter in front is pronounced. Hell. It's the beauty of conservative uh, conservative spelling. Um, <laughs> you make it work somehow. Hmm. We have. You know what? Let me let me do the last two uh, real quick, so we get through this page. Um, in Ramach Jerry Jerry, um, Jerry Jerry or Jerry Jerry is stranger. Um, uh, Ramach Jerry Jerry is a stranger, and this is just a simple nominal sentence. Is it a stranger? Question mark. And again, no copula. So it's just a stranger, and you put the the in in, in front of it to basically um, make that into a, a overtly marked question. And the last one, um, in set dai em achet a er chaiti. Um, so this one is uh, an expression for like themselves uh, itself, I guess in this case itself. Um, the Ahed R is actually, I think it's the Valley of the Kings, literally the great um, the great field. So they are here in the great field 
is it by itself or by themselves? Maybe it means by themselves. I'll have to double check. Um, but then the interesting question then is what happens with the the ini? Well, it's just becoming a question. Uh, um, yeah, it's becoming an interrogative sentence. Uh, are they in the great field? In other words, in the valley of the kings? Jeez, can't talk today. In the valley of the kings by themselves or by itself. So that's in a, in a nutshell what that is. So you take the normal sentence as always and you just put the question marker in front of it. And that's it. Nothing too earth shattering. Compared to what we have to do in English, where we have to restructure the whole sentence to put a do or would or whatnot in front, it's actually compared to, it's strikingly easy. Cool. Then I would say we do this one the next time, just so that I'm not late to Sumerian, um, and add something on the converters, and then we're done with the morphology section. And I think I'll try to send a homework in between on the question marks a uh, question markers and maybe the negation. Okay, Doc. Yes, well, thank you so much. Nice, thanks. Thank Bye. you. Always. See you soon. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Yep.